Hey friends, we're gonna start an Alma Thomas inspired radial painting. So what you're gonna need, something to make a nice circle with, I'm just using a little roll of tape. You'll need a pencil, or you can use colored pencils. I just got these at the dollar store. They're neon, ooh, dollar for a whole pack, so nice. Okay, I've also got some square flat tip paint brushes. That's gonna make our perfect little dashes. And I've got a bunch of different colors of paint and I arranged mine because I like to make a little situation. Okay, so first things first, you're going to trace your circle somewhere on your page. I'm not gonna put mine right in the center because I'm going to use the rule of thirds, which is if you imagine separating your paper in like, let's say you draw a line here and a line here. You have three sections. So it's just as balanced if you do something off in one of your thirds as if you were to do it straight at the center. So mine's almost gonna look like a sun, I would imagine. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace this. There we go, there's my little circle. And you're gonna choose a color to paint that circle on the inside. And then the rest I'm not really gonna need any sort of tracer with. Let's see, I'm gonna start with this super hot pink. These are just little neon acrylic paints that I found at Target. They're from Handmade Modern, and they're just a great little size, and you can just work right out of the bottle. All right, so let's do, I'm gonna use my long paintbrush. Oop, pop a bubble. Ooh, so nice. paints are not super opaque, I've learned, but with a few layers you can kind of get rid of those brush strokes if you don't like them. Sometimes I like to lay it nice and thick. Alright, I'll go ahead and clean my brush. I always like to have a paper towel next to my water so that I can wipe the excess that doesn't come up in the water right in there oh, there we go all right now i'm gonna just choose my next color there actually you know what? i'm gonna go ahead and do a row with this so all you're gonna do is get a little paint on that brush and you're going to be making little dash marks have enough space, like I do not, clearly, to turn your paper. That's gonna make this a whole lot easier for you. So I should have enough room here. So I'm just gonna make little dash marks using the shape of that paintbrush. Nice and neat, put a little tiny space in between each one. This is exactly how Ama Thomas worked. So it's almost a meditative process. You kind of get lost in what you're creating. Okay, there's my first row. I always like to imagine, especially when I'm doing a piece of art inspired by an artist who lived back in history, I like to imagine what was going through their head when they were making their art. Were they confident about what they were making? Were they nervous? Were they just trying something? Were they just having fun? How do you feel when you make art? I usually feel pretty calm. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna switch to my next color. Get that brush all clean. And you can do rainbow colors, whatever color order you want. That's where you really get to shine in this, is choosing your colors. That's what makes all of these so different. 
So I'm going to switch to this hot coral. It's almost like an orange. I think this one's brand new. I treated myself to some new paints recently. I, I've been into neon things lately, so I got some neon bright paints. I usually work with a lot of earth tones, but sometimes you just need some bright colors. Ooh, I just knocked that with my head. All right, and I'm gonna get another smaller brush on deck, because I might wanna make some smaller ones too. All right, let's see. These are about the same size. I'm gonna switch to this brush. This brush I also got at Walmart, I believe. They're Royal Lang Nickel Crafter's Choice, and these are awesome. They've got the little squishy like the ones we have in school. So if you need a gift idea. Now, one thing I'm gonna do before I put this down, wherever there is a space right there, that's where I'm gonna put my next row. And you can do it that way, or you can do it whichever way you want to. It's kind of like, when you think of it that way, it's kind of like laying bricks. You think of a brick house. Wherever there's a space, there's another brick to cover that space. Or kind of like weaving too. So there's lots of things that kind of correlate when you think about art techniques. watching this video and painting at the same time as me. Obviously it won't be as I'm recording this, but it'll feel like it. We'll just all pretend we're sitting in the art room and class, listening to music and painting together. Some of my favorite times with you guys. I think this one's new too. Let's get that one open. You know what? I'm gonna use that paint right there. A decent amount of paint. All right, we're gonna do some neon yellow. Ooh, that's so pretty. So I'm just keeping my lines organized right in a row. And what we're doing is called radial balance or symmetry even because we are making this symmetrical because it's radial. Symmetrical is when two things match on either side. So imagine a butterfly's wings or your face. You have two eyes on each face. And radial symmetry is when those things all balance out in a circle. It's a radially. So we're balancing this out because whatever we do on this side, we're doing on that side. All right, on to the next. The other thing that's cool about this is you can crank out a bunch of these really fast because they're super simple. Ooh, this one's a little bit thick. Like you're not having to use a whole bunch of talent or skill with this. This is actually a very easy technique. So if you're not super confident in your painting skills, this is a great place to start. Artists need to just have time to just play with things that are not just a perfect painting of somebody's face or flowers or something. Sometimes you just need to paint. This one's 
super thick and all the other ones have been not thick. When Alma Thomas painted, she painted on big canvases and she used very thick brush strokes. Like in some of her, the pictures of her paintings, you can see where the paint has dried, raised, because she used a lot of texture in her painting, which means you could physically see the paint. I love that in artwork. It's one of my favorite things. I don't know what it is. It's almost like I'm looking at frosting. need to put some water in these ones to keep them nice. I've never had closed paint dry out like that. Okay. Oh, that's my favorite green. And this is one called avocado. And I love avocados. Change the size of your brush strokes as you need to. Oh, you hear my dogs barking? That must mean daddy's home. Whenever my husband comes home, they lose their minds. I hear him. Sorry if it gets really loud. go ahead and speed up this video because you guys are probably working on yours by the time you're watching this hopefully and I'm pretty sure you guys understand what to do at this point so let's do a time lapse 